declaration or the notice or the, the thing that's important, you'll have one in front of it and one behind it. That's all right. So it, it was kind of like, Anna said, okay, you're, you're definitely going to listen to this. You know, this is powerful and strong. And now that I've got your attention, I want you to know that its strength can be very gentle. Uh, there's a couple of businesses that I've run into over the years called Gentle Strength. And uh, Sananda, if I were to use two words to describe him, it's gentle strength. Um, he's in, he is strong beyond any definition of strength that I've ever, ever encountered before. I mean, he has a vast consciousness and he's incredibly powerful and incredibly strong. And yet at the same time, he's so soft and so gentle and so compassionate. And so he started coming to me and my friend many years ago, and we channeled a series of lessons. And then my friend went on to other things, and I took the ball and channeled further series of lessons. And I now have six phases, and each phase has 26 lessons, not including reviews and introductions and things of that nature. That's a lot of lessons, and you might be thinking, that, well, that's well over 150 lessons. And you might be thinking, well, why so many lessons? And some of them are on similar topics. Uh, there, there may be several on one topic, and each time he introduces them, they're a little bit deeper and more elaborate than the time before. And it's because of the need for reinforcement that this school was brought into being. It's not particularly earth-shattering in the sense that this is, oh my God, this is new information, I've never heard anything like this before, oh my God. It's not like that. Yes, some of the information is probably new. And some of it is probably old information reworded, said in a different way. But the point is, because we live in such a negative world, and when I say negative, I mean thought forms, that tend to impede our spiritual progress, that tend to distract us from our spiritual path. Some thought forms are obviously negative, like uh, I'm not good enough, something wrong with me, I don't deserve love. Those, those are obviously negative thoughts, but, but others are, are more subtle. And so, if we were truly aware of the fact that right now, in this very room, there are negative thoughts singing out because of the billions of people on this planet that are thinking them. And, and so it creates a negative psychic soup around this planet. And if you're at sea level or in populated areas, you're especially susceptible to negative thought forms. It's not that people are evil and they want to think negatively, it's that they have developed bad habits of thought. Um, and a lot of it has come from history, the long history of this planet about 99% of which we are not taught in school, and only maybe 1% of what we are taught in school is accurate. The rest of it is propaganda. It doesn't matter what country you belong to. You're going to hear the story of the victors who lived to tell the tale. You're not going to hear the story of the people who, who weren't victors or who had to go into hiding because nobody would accept their religious beliefs. Etc. Etc. Well, now in this day and age, a lot of those stories are coming out also. People are hearing about groups like the Cathars and the Baha'i and you know, various groups that have been tortured and silenced throughout history but have had an important message. So, my point is that unless we do something every day or at least every week to strengthen our spiritual practice, as many of you mentioned, we're going to end up getting sucked into the negative patterns of this world. Even though this world is becoming more positive all the time, and you may think, oh, he's really lost it. Right? It doesn't look like it's getting more positive to me. Just turn on the news and there's earthquakes and volcanoes and tsunami waves and you know, oil spills and, and wars and you know, I could go on and on. But really what's happening is that this planet is raising its vibration, and as it does so, everything that's been suppressed and, and hidden down into the surface of consciousness is being brought to the surface so it can be healed and released. And that's what's going on in the world. Um, the 
is everybody ready to process all this negativity that we've held down for so long? No. Uh, it, a lot of souls are not going to make it through this great shift that we're going through. And on one level, that's a tragedy, but on another level, it's absolutely perfect. Because every soul ultimately receives what it truly desires. And many of the young souls on this planet are learning about war, poverty, misery, suppression, destruction, guilt, shame, etc. And who are we to determine that they shouldn't have those experiences? Now, if they wake up enough to realize that, you know, there's something else to experience that is more desirable than guilt, shame, war, fear, poverty, etc. And they reach out and say, help me. I want to learn how to awaken. I want to have more than this miserable life that we've uh, experienced up until now. Then that's the call for love that we are here to answer, many of us, in whatever way is appropriate. Not by saving anybody, because we're not here to save anyone, but by simply offering a compassionate heart or a compassionate hand to people who are, are wanting to help along the path. So, we are the light bearers, we are the servers, we are the ones who, who we've been waiting for, to quote somebody. Um, I think it was Gandhi or somebody. We are the ones we've been waiting for. Maybe it was the... Uh, um, Grateful Holy Dead. <laughs> Whoever it was. Um, and so, yes, we will be called into world service as a result of reinforcing our connection to our God presence. So, Enough of the philosophy behind the course. Um, what does the course entail? Well, in the beginning, we used to send out one lesson a week to people who subscribed online. And occasionally, we would do an in-person course for people. And that worked well for a while. And then I noticed a lot of people would drop out as, as time went on. And I honor and respect people who don't continue because sometimes you will get guidance, you know, this felt really good in the beginning, but I don't feel like it's any longer appropriate for me, and so I'm going to drop it. And that's fine. 